Uh, right, so we're going to do um, Brecklin Chemistry. This is the open paper that's on the internet, on the OCR website. So uh, it's freely available to download. Um, I'm going to go through the mark scheme with you. So we kick off with some multiple choice. Um, 25 minutes you should spend on this. So the first one, reasonably straightforward. How many electrons are there in this iron? Well, magnesium's atomic number is 12. So uh, the atom would have 12 electrons, but it's a two plus sign, so it's lost two. And therefore the answer is A, 10 for this one. What is the formula of chromium-3 sulfate? Well, chromium-3 Cr3 plus. Sulfate, you need to know, is SO4, two minus. So I've got three pluses, two minuses. So let's put some more minuses there. Four minuses, three pluses. So I now need another plus. Six pluses, four minuses. Let's do another minus. Six minuses, six pluses. So the formula is Cr2. We need to put sulfate in brackets. Remember SO4, three. So which of these is non-polar? Um, so you're looking for a symmetrical molecule. Um, SF6 is going to be octahedral, so it will be symmetrical, and therefore the answer is A. You don't need to worry about the rest. Um, if you're not sure, H2S is going to be non-linear, it's going to be like water, because sulfur, of course, is the same group of oxygen. PF3 is going to be pyramidal, uh, because phosphorus has a lone pair, and the same will be for NH3 as well, it's going to be pyramidal. So the answer to three is A. Okay, so moving on, which of these rows is correct? So you need to go through this quite carefully. First of all, most reactive halogen is going to be fluorine, so it's either going to be A or C. Highest pH when added to water, we need to know your solubility trends for group two for this one, and you should know that solubility increases for the oxides down the group, um, because this would form barium hydroxide, which is far more soluble than magnesium hydroxide, and therefore the answer to four is C. Which of these is a redox reaction? Okay, well again, you can go through all of these if you like, but let's go for A first of all. The oxidation state of elemental magnesium is zero. Hydrogen is going to be in hydrogen chloride plus one and chloride minus one. Magnesium and magnesium chloride have got to be plus two, with each, mag uh, with each chloride being minus one, and hydrogen here is zero, and therefore magnesium has changed oxidation state, so has hydrogen, and therefore the answer is A. A uh, nice question about the periodic table now. Which of these trends is correct? Melting point decreases from lithium to carbon. Well, that's not true. Is it because carbon has got the highest uh, melting point? Boiling point decreases from fluorine to iodine. Well, again, that's not true, it's the opposite. First ionization energy decreases from lithium to cesium. Lithium and cesium are in the same group, they're both group one, um, so that's right. The first ionization will decrease because the atoms are getting larger and therefore the outer electron is further away from the nucleus. So the answer to six is C. Uh, right, for this one you actually have to do some working out. So let's do this. I've got carbon, hydrogen, and oh, nitrogen. Uh, 1.46 of that, 0.482 of that, and 1.39 of nitrogen. Um, you need to work out the empirical formula, so you divide by the relative atomic mass of each of these. If you do that, you get uh, 0 0.122, 0 0.482, and 0.142. Divide by the smallest one, which is that one. That's one, that's four, and that's pretty much one as well. And therefore, it's CNH4, which is C. Uh, this one looks Pretty complicated, it's not actually too bad. Um, a student mixes 100 centimetres cubed of 0.2 mole uh, sodium chloride with 100 of 0.2 sodium carbonate. The key thing to note is that you've got two 
sodiums here. So although it's 0.2 moles per decimal cube sodium carbonate, if you're just looking at sodium ions, it's 0.4 moles of sodium ions present. Um, you're also doubling the volume um, because you're adding 100 of here to 100 of here. So um, if you think about it, your, um, the number of ions is now 0.2 of there plus 0.4 there, which is 0.6. However, your volume has been divided by 2, divided by 2, which gives you 0.3, and therefore the answer is C. Uh, which mass contains the greatest number of atoms? Well, you just need to work out the number of moles, because the more moles you've got, the more atoms you've got. So it's mass over molar mass, uh, so you need to work out the molar mass for each of these. Uh, molar mass of ammonia is, of course, 17. So 3 divided by 17 is 0.176. And then the same for each of these. So 0.025, uh, 0.118, and 0.125. So what's the biggest number? Well, it is, of course, A. So the answer is A. So for this one, again, you need to um, maybe get the calculator out. Which reagent would exactly neutralise 100 centimetres cubed of one mole per decimeter cubed sulfuric acid? So how many moles of sulfuric acid do you have? Well, it's concentration times volume divided by 1,000. So you've got 0.1 moles of H2SO4. Um, but you've got 0.2 moles of H+. Plus. Because for every one of those, you get two H plus ions produced. Um, so you need to find something which is going to neutralise 0.2 moles of H plus. Well, if you just go through, this has got three hydroxides in it. So the concentration of hydroxide ions is 0.3. The content, this is uh, ammonia, um, will only neutralise one H plus. So that's not going to do it, because I've only got 0.1 moles of that. You've got two hydroxides here, so your concentration of hydroxides is 0.2, which is the same as that, so the answer is C. Oh, right, so the next one you need to do a HES cycle. Key thing to note is they're giving you formation data. Don't worry about this. What are they giving you? They're giving you formation data. So, down here is going to go the elements. So what elements do I have? I have got 2N2 plus 4H2 plus 3.5O2. Just let me adjust the board. Okay, um, and now I need to add in my arrows. It's formation data, so the arrows go up like so. Formation of ammonium nitrate is minus 266, but I've got two of them, so that comes to minus 732. Nitrogen, don't, don't worry about because there's no change. Water is minus 242, but I have got four of them, which gives me minus 968. And Carbon dioxide is minus 394. I've only got one of those. So that comes to a grand total of minus 1,362. Right, now you need to do your equation. Can you see that these two arrows, that one and that one, are going the same direction? If I do my little circle, clockwise arrows go around. These arrows go clockwise, these arrows go anti-clockwise. So this change here, delta H, delta H minus 732 is equal to minus, minus uh, 1362. Again, apologies for the board. Okay, you rearrange that and you should, oh, that should be minus one. Uh, you rearrange that and delta H equals minus 600. 30 and therefore the answer is A.
Uh, right, okay, so we can pop the calculator away for a couple of minutes. Um, carbon monoxide reacts with steam in the following reaction. What change will shift the position of the equilibrium to the right hand side? So I want to get it onto this side. Can pressure do anything? Well, no, pressure can't do anything because I've got two moles of gas this side, two moles of gas that side, so pressure won't affect it at all. So it's got to be temperature. This is an exothermic reaction. So in order to favour this one, I need to remove heat. So the answer is C. I want to decrease the temperature and that will drive the reactor to the right hand side because that generates heat. So 12 is C. Which substance contains hydrogen bonding in the liquid state? Remember for hydrogen bonding, you need a hydrogen bonded to a nitrogen, an oxygen or a fluorine. So let's look for that. Have I, got, first of all, I haven't even got an oxygen, nitrogen or fluorine in that one. I've got a fluorine in this one, but the hydrogen isn't bonded to it. Um, this one, I've got oxygen, but no hydrogen bonded to it. Oh, happy days, D, I've got an OH group, which means it's an alcohol and I have hydrogen bonding. So 13 is D. Okay, so what volume of gas at room temperature and pressure which means I can use the equation that uh, one mole of any gas at room temperature pressure has a volume of 24,000 centimetres cubed. That's on your data sheet. Um, is required for complete combustion of uh, 1.25 times to minus 3 moles of propane 1 ohm. Okay, for one of those, I need 4.5 of those. You need to do your balanced equation first of all, otherwise you're not going to get this right. So, 1.25 times to minus 3 times 4.5 gives you 5.6. 2 pi times 10 to the minus, oh, minus 3. Um, right, and then you times that number by 24,000, and the answer you'll get is C, 135. Okay, so this is one that will probably drive you a little bit mad when you're stressed for time. Um, you know, it is quite straightforward. So, Three of the following display formula represent the same isomer, but one is a different isomer. So we've got to spot the different ones. So hopefully you can see that this one and this one, they are the same. All you've done, because this has got free rotation around, so you've just circled around there. Um, let's have a look. This one and this one are the same. You've just swapped them side down, you just rotated. So the different one is D, this one here, because your um, H and this group are trans to each other, then all the others, it's Cl, which is trans to that group. Which alcohol will not react with potassium dichromate? So you're looking for a tertiary alcohol for this one. Uh, okay, so hopefully you can see the only tertiary alcohol I have is going to be D because there aren't any hydrogens on that carbon left. Right now it's polymer one now. Identify the monomer that would give rise to this section of the addition polymer. So let's look at a repeat unit. Uh, well, let's just go for that. So the repeat unit, you put your double bond there, and what have you got? You've got, if you ignore that bond and that bond there, it's gonna be C, double bond C, and then CH3. So it's going to be propene if you draw that out. CH2, double bond, 